This is the inside of the Auto Trail Tracker FB. If I firstly move to the main control panel, I can turn the 12 volt on just here. Once I've done this, I can turn the water pump on and off just here. The water pump needs to be on so we can get water out of the taps, flush the toilet and fill the boiler if it's been drained down. Next we have battery selection. So when the blue light is illuminated, we are using the vehicle battery to power the back end of the motorhome. And when it's not illuminated, we are using the leisure battery. Whichever battery is selected on here, whilst you're hooked up to mains electricity, is the battery you are charging. Awning light on and off just here. And then all other information is given via scrolling. So if I go back to the beginning first of all, this is a Sargent EC300 control panel and it's displaying the time and it's also giving us an internal temperature. Next we have event set. An event is basically a countdown timer and it can be set just by arrowing into it and then just altering it on the arrow keys. After that we then have a wake up alarm and again we just set it here by arrowing in. Clock set, again just arrow in and then just use the arrows. Tank heaters on and off, external temperature, what the solar panel is currently doing, so it's actually putting 2.6 amps at the moment to the vehicle battery, the battery current, how much water is in the waste tank, how much water is in the fresh tank, condition of the vehicle battery, condition of the leisure battery, and then back to the beginning again. Beside this control panel, we then have the Trima control panel for the heating and hot water system. At the moment it's displaying the time and letting us know that we have main supply connected with the little picture of the two pin plug just here. If I now press the button, you'll see a series of icons appear and as I rotate they will begin to flash. So if we start with the first icon just here, this one is for your heating, so if I now click on it Heating is off, all I now do is just rotate and pick whatever temperature I would like it to be inside the motorhome and it will go right the way up to 30 degrees. So once you've decided, just press the button to store it in and you'll now see a little flame has appeared above and that little flame there just represents the heating system and it's just letting you know that you've set a parameter. Whenever the heating is in operation it will begin to flash and it will continue to flash until it's achieved the temperature you have asked. If we now move across to the next icon, this one here is for hot water. So again, if I now press and rotate, we can heat hot water to about 40 degrees. And if I rotate again, we can heat hot water to about 60 degrees. And if I rotate again, we can also perform a boost on the boiler. The boost was mainly designed for if there's going to be more than one of you having a shower in quick succession of each other, or if you just want hot water very quickly. If you do perform the boost and the heating's running, the heating will turn off because it needs to use the extra power to perform the boost. And again, the icon will continue to flash until it's achieved the temperature you have asked. After that, we then have power source selection. So currently at the moment, to do the heating and the hot water, I'm using mains electricity using two kilowatts, indicated by the two little lightning strikes just up here. If I rotate, I can lower the power consumption to one kilowatt. Very handy if we're on a low amp site to try and avoid tripping. If I rotate again, we can use dual fuel. So we can use a mixture of gas and mains at two kilowatts, 
or a mixture of gas and mains at one. This particular setting is very handy, especially in the winter months, to get you up to temperature nice and quickly, and it will only consume gas as it's required. And then lastly, if we have no main supply, we can solely run on the gas. Next we have the circulation fan for the heating. We can run the fan in eco or high. And what we can also do with that fan is vent the motorhome on a warm day, but we do have to have both hot water off and obviously the heating off. And if I now return to it, we can put it into vent and it has a fan speed of 1 to 10. If I now rotate, we'll drop to the lower icons, and this first one here is for a basic timer. If I now click on it, we can set when we would like the timer to begin, and then when we would like it to end. Once we've done this, we can then decide what we would like on within that period. Lastly, timer on or off, if I now activate the timer, the timer icon will come up there and now within that time period those settings would apply. If I now return to it, we can turn it back off again and if I go back in, we can now alter it again. Next we have clock set. And then lastly we have the settings menu. In this we have index, which is mainly for the technicians in the workshop, it just lets them know what software it's currently running. We have brightness of the backlight of this screen. Language. Full factory reset. Offset, just for the thermostat. If you don't think it's quite correct, you can just slightly adjust it. From time to time, these control panels may throw up error codes. They will usually be something relatively basic. So if we're trying to run either heating or hot water on main supply, and you have no mains connected, or you've tripped, it will throw up an error code to let you know. It will do the same for if you're trying to run anything on gas, and you have your gas bottle turned off, or you've depleted. An error code will appear where my finger is here as a warning triangle, and if you click on it, it will then display a series of letters and numbers, and then within the manual, or if you Google it, it will tell you what the problem is. Nine times out of 10, as long as you rectify the problem, the error code will just automatically disappear. If this is not the case, just go back to the warning triangle and double click on it, and it will then sometimes say no error, and then disappear. If this still doesn't work, if you still have anything running along the top here, turn them off because it can assess a lot quicker when it's not trying to do lots of things at once. If you've done this and you still have an error code, I then always suggest the good old fashioned turn it off, turn it back on again. And the way we turn this system off is just by holding this button in here until it says off. If you do this and you still have an error code, I then always suggest lastly doing the factory reset because sometimes that's all these control panels require. If I now come across to the overhead locker just here, we will find the consumer unit. So we have the main strip switches just here. So we have the three individual MCBs, the main RCD and test button just there. So if anything's not working on main supply, just check to see if you've tripped. You'll see they're labeled up just here and correspond on this sticker up here. Beside that we have the 12 volt fuses, again they're all numbered up, so if anything's not working on 12 volt just check to see if you've blown a fuse, and again they will correspond to the sticker just here. We have isolator switches just here, so we have an isolator switch for both the heating and the hot water system, so if you turn these off here and you're trying to run the Truma system on main supply you will get an error code. So quite frankly, these can be left alone. They're more for maintenance than anything else. We then have the green one here for the battery charger. Again, we want this turned on because we want to be able to charge both vehicle and leisure batteries when hooked up to mains electricity. 
This one here will illuminate if you have reverse polarity connected to the motorhome. This can sometimes be found if you are on continental sites. We have buttons just here which are virtually the same as what you'll find on the main control panel. So we have 12 volt on and off just here. We have water pump on and off. We then have the main isolator for the lights and we have switch between batteries just here. Full system shutdown can be found just here. So if you're not using the motorhome for a long period of time, you can press this to kill any residual draw on the leisure battery itself. And then just tuck down here, we also have a USB charge point. Beside this is the television aerial. To raise the television aerial, just loosen the collar just here, and then you'll be able to push the mast up and then lock it into place. Never over tighten these collars because you do run the risk of splitting them. H is for horizontal. We can flip the aerial into the vertical position for additional tuning if required, just by turning the tail just here. The digital amplifier for it is here, and this particular one has a signal finder in it. So if you have a green light just here, you know you've got a nice strong signal. You can control the boost just here and turn it on and off at the top here. And then it's just a matter of coming over to the Avtex TV, turning it on, and then just retuning it in. Literally just go down to auto search, click OK, and it will then begin to search for TV and radio stations. This also has a quick tune just here as well, so you just hold the button in and it will always then take you straight back to the retune menu to retune it in every time you change location. Always make sure that the aerial is down for travel. Underneath the bench seat just here, you will find storage and the location of the leisure battery just there. And underneath the other bench seat is literally just storage. Microwave just here. This will work when the motorhome is connected to mains electricity. To turn it on, just hit the eco button just here. Always advisable to remove any contents for travel. Quick start just here, stop, and then we have auto cook, etc., defrost just there. Beneath that, we have the hob. So we've got the electric hot plate just there, which, like the microwave, will work when the motorhome is connected to mains electricity. Operates just here, and the red light comes on to let you know it's in operation. Beside that we then have the gas rings, so to light these just push in, twist and then just push the igniter. Beneath these we then have the grill and again just push in, twist and push the igniter. And then beneath that we have the oven. The oven also has an inspection light.
beneath the oven, storage, but also tucked underneath here you will find a plug plugged in which is just for the electric hot plate and then also underneath here are the gas isolation taps for the motorhome. So we have underneath there the closest one being for the cooker, then we have the little snowflake for the fridge, then we have the barbecue point and then right at the very back the heating and hot water. All of these can stay in the on position, I always say they're more for maintenance than anything else. If you do smell gas in the motorhome go to the source and turn off the gas bottle. Fed fridge freezer just here. To turn the unit on, just press the button here. This is an automatic model, so as long as it's on A for auto, it will find the best power source it can for you. So, because we're currently hooked up to mains electricity, it's put it us, us onto mains with the picture of the two pin plug. If I was now to run outside and pull the mains lead out, it would then automatically attempt to fire itself up onto gas. And as soon as we start the engine of the motorhome, it will then automatically go over to 12 volt maintain to keep the fridge cold whilst on the move. As you can see, the screen will disappear after a few seconds. Just tap the on off button to bring it back up again. I can take it out of auto by pressing here. So we can manually put it onto mains. Manually put it onto 12 volt maintain. We're going to get an error code at the minute because the engine's currently not running and we can manually put it onto gas. But automatic is the easiest option to have it on. Temperature control just here. And then the unit's anti-condensation jacket on and off just here. The anti-condensation jacket needs to be on, especially in the warmer months of the year. This will stop a buildup of condensation behind the unit, which would then run down and form a puddle beneath it. In the cooler months, it can be turned off. Freezer compartment at the top and then the fridge at the bottom. Because this is a large fridge it does come with a second travel catch located at the bottom just here. Freestanding table just located here. Electric step control just here. This will also this put the step out on the keys as well. On event fan just here to use this. Firstly, wind to put the roof vent up. Then we have middle button to turn the unit on. And then we have arrows out for extraction and arrows in for cooling. Variable fan speed just by pressing. Do make sure that all roof vents are closed for travel. Wardrobe just here. TV bracket just here and then we have TV plug-in points just here as well if a TV is just mounted. Access underneath the fixed bed just by lifting up and then we can see the trimmer combi boiler just there, the drain valve just there and the water pump over there. Washroom, we have the shower cubicle just at the back. Do make sure that the shower screen doors are closed for travel as it states just here. We then have the toilet to open to the cassette. Just slide the grey lever across just here. 
blue button to flush with this particular one when you press it firstly the fan will begin to spin and then if you press it again it will then flush if you want to pause the fan just press it and it will then stop it level indicator just here this will rise and indicate to let you know when the cassette needs emptying the seat swivel round on the levers just here and they're also height adjustable on the levers just on this side 